live. It could be the first song of the set. It's the first song of Baby the Evening. You want to get people connected, involved, hands up in the air, clapping, kind of getting into it. So you may want to start by saying something just as simple as good morning. You may want to say good morning, church, or maybe the name of your church. Community church. Good morning. I'm so glad that you're here. You may want to even say if you're new, my name is. You don't have to say that, but you may want to just introduce yourself. Or you can just say, good morning, church. And they say something simple as, let's all get up, put our hands together, put our hands together, and sing to Jesus. Sing to Jesus. Something as simple as, good morning, church. Let's all get up, put our hands together, and sing to Jesus. That is is simple. You can do it. It's very easy to say, to memorize. You can adjust it to your personality, to the language that you uh, want to use. It sounds more natural to you. But then you're on your way. You get people going. You're into it. Now let's say you're verse one. I was lost with a broken heart. People are singing. Everyone's into it. Pre-chorus, pretty easy. Now here comes a chorus, right, which is the the more exciting part of the song. You may want to cue, that's the word we use, cue the congregation by saying, you are alive. Basically, you're just repeating the words that they're about to sing. You're cueing them. You're giving them a, a verbal cue, and it also helps the band to know kind of where you're at and where you're going of what they're about to say. So you may, you may do something like, because you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love never ending. Oh, 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 you are alive. There's the cue. And then boom, into the chorus. Same thing that during the instrumental. A lot of times vocalists feel awkward during instrumentals because there's nothing for you to do. And guess who also feels awkward? The church. They don't know what to do either. So what you may want to say is during the instrumental, you can, you can just, again, cue what we just said. So for example, let's say, Before the instrumental, we were singing the chorus. You are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. You are all we need. Your love has set us free. And then you have eight bars of instrumental. You can cue the church by saying, you are, you are alive, Lord. Which is just what the chorus, what, what we just said. You can say, nothing can take your place, God. Right? You can say, your love set us free, Lord. During the instrumental, you don't have to say anything, but I would say I would advise to at least have something prepared. Simple. You might want to cue. Don't over cue. You don't have to over cue because then that can distract from the worship. But you can say in the midst before verse three as a cue into the verse. And then you can also cue before the pre-chorus. You are my freedom. I wouldn't cue. You are you. <laughs> that doesn't sound very very intelligent, right? You would cue something that makes sense, like you're my freedom, or we lift you higher. Avoid chopping up sentences, like we lift. That doesn't make any sense. Say something that is, intel that is intelligible, that is uh, intelligent, and, and it uh, makes sense, such as you're my freedom, such as we lift, such as your love never ends. I'm not saying cue everywhere. I'm not saying say a bunch of stuff. These are just ideas for what to do if you feel the church is not into it, if it's a new song, if you feel nervous, if you don't quite know kind of what to do or what to say. These are some things to say. I would say to try to strike a balance between saying something and saying too much. When the worship leader doesn't say anything because of nerves or just not knowing what to do, this can be helpful. But as I said, you don't want to over talk because it's distracting. At the end of a song, what do you do? It's another place where it's kind of uncomfortable or kind of can be awkward for worship leaders or vocalists that are leading. What do you say? Well, you can tag the last part that we just sung. So normally it's the chorus that we end the song with. So you are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. You are all we need. Your love has set us free. So you may want to end or tag and say, Thank you, Lord, for, thank you, Lord, for, what would you say here? Setting me free or setting us. Always better to say us.
because you're speaking on behalf of the whole church. Try to avoid me or I or any of that kind of stuff. Instead, we, us, together, Lord, we worship you. God, we thank you. And so you can just simply end with tagging the chorus. You are alive. You can say, thank you, Lord, that you set us free. And normally that would be done as the band is wrapping up the song or the drums are playing kind of the cymbals loud to keep the energy going into the next song. So I hope that helps. These are some of the things to do during the upbeat songs. In the next video, I'm going to talk about what to say during the slow songs. In this video, I wanted to show you some of the basic music vocabulary that you would want to use when rehearsing a band and using a chart from Song Select or anywhere else. So this here is going to be called the intro. Some of this is pretty basic, just so you know. And normally most intros are eight bars. So we can put 8B to denote eight bars. It could be 16 bars, it might be four, but most of the time it's eight bars. Or the intro done twice. So you could also say twice or write 2X. This is called the verse, or you could call it the A section. Verse two, it's once again the A section, but you can just say A2, A1. The pre-chorus, you could call it the B section. And then you have here the chorus itself, which is the C section. And then most songs these days have a bridge or an instrumental, as you can see down here. You can call it, you can call it the D section. At the end of the song, you have an outro, which is basically the intro, but it's at the end of the song. And normally it's done twice or, again, eight bars. You might also have, before the outro, a tag, which is usually repeating the last line of the chorus. Let's say, here in this song, you have given me love unfailing, hey, hey. You might do that two or three times. Most of the time, it's three times. It's called a tag. At the end of the song, when you have kind of the vamp or the shout or the trash can, as some call it, that's when the drums and the cymbals are louder and you have that sense of praise and, and a big ending. You could call it big ending. You could call it trash can, <laughs> TC. You could call it just end big. And your drummer will understand what that means, especially your drummer. You want him to understand, him or her, to understand to end big or to trash can the song at the end. Another thing that you may want to think about is sometimes before, let's say at the end of a chorus, before you go to, let's say to verse two, there might be what's called a turnaround. Turn around, we'll call it teal, turnaround. So it doesn't just go directly to the verse. There's usually some sort of space between the chorus and the verse. And you might want to call that a turnaround or you may just simply want to say two bars of turnaround, 2B, two bars. And that normally is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then back to the verse. So that is sometimes very useful. Intro, to recap, intro, eight bars. Or you can say another way, I learned this from the Beatles, they'll say to do a middle 12 or a middle 16. And so sometimes that means is that you're going to go eight bars at the intro. Then you're going to go to the verse, to the verse, verse two, pre-chorus. And then for the chorus, normally most choruses or drops, as we call it in hip hop or R&B, are normally eight bars. And sometimes they're twice. Sometimes we do the chorus twice. So you'll put two X or you'll say the chorus twice. And most of the time, especially in pop and worship music, R&B, hip-hop, it's a total of 16 bars. So they'll call this the middle 16. So you can just say verse 1, verse 2, middle 16, boom, to the outro. The musician will know exactly what you mean. And if they don't, you can explain to them what that means. So to recap, you can say 8 bars of intro, verse 1, verse 2, or you can say A1, A2. Then you can say, go to the B section or the pre-chorus. It's another great term to use is pre-chorus or pre-hook. But in worship, we mostly call it pre-chorus. Then the chorus, and that can be called the middle 16. Or you can just say twice through or the chorus twice. 
And then you can say, at the end of the chorus, do a two bar turnaround. Then you go into the instrumental. You can call that a vamp or just simply instrumental. Everyone understands what that is. If you want the drummer and the band to get louder during the instrumental, let's say the instrumental is four times, you can say crescendo. That means growing, crescendo. No, I won't write it, the whole thing here won't fit. Crescendo. You can say do the instrumental or the vamp twice. Crescendo, or you can just say growing or louder, same thing. It's better to use simple words that everyone understands or explain what that means. Crescendo means you're growing. The bridge, sometimes a bridge is done, let's say, four times. So you can just say the bridge four times. And the same thing, growing, or you can say crescendo. And then at the end of the bridge, let's say there is a some space or a gap between the, the bridge and the chorus. As I said earlier, you can then say, uh, let's see, turnaround. Yeah, two bars. Let's say there's a stop at the end of that bridge, like one, two, three, four, one. You can just say end on one or stop or end on one. One means the first beat. So da, 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 five, six, seven, eight, stop. That means one. You might end on two, but most of the time you end on one. Okay, so I hope that helps some of the basic music vocabulary that you want to use as a music director or worship leader to communicate effectively with your vocal team, with your musicians. Now, speaking of vocal team, the vocalists don't think in terms of this as much as a drummer or a bass player or a keyboard guitar player. They think more lyrically. The instrumentalists can also think lyrically, but most of the time they're thinking in blocks. So you may want to use both languages or both things. You can say, let's do verse one, let praise awaken. So that way you're cueing the musicians that's verse one. So they're like, okay, I know what that is. And the vocalists, they know what to sing. You may even want to add a third element and use the actual key. You may say, verse one, let praise awaken, starting in A. Now you've, you've given everyone everything they need. The vocalists know what to sing. The musicians know that it's the verse section. And then the musicians knows that we're starting in A, not in C or in B or whatever else. So then you can go, verse two, the ground is shaking, A. Pre-chorus, you're a faithful, C-sharp minor. Chorus, every day of my life, B. You can say vamp or instrumental, eight bars, starting in E. You can say bridge, four times or twice through, starting in E, let praise awaken. Outro, trash can out. I hope you learn a lot and I hope that helps you. Let me know if this helps you and if you're implementing it, during your rehearsal, send me a video, send me a little clip of your practice on Instagram at David Trigg. Thank you so much.